This country is really weird. It's one of the richest countries in the world and has some of the best natural resources. It has beautiful nature but also terrible wildfires. Australians are some of the worst polluters in the world, even though it would be easier for them to cut their carbon footprint, and they have a lot more reason to do so. So how did Australia get such a bad reputation when it comes to climate change? And can they manage this? Let's see. Australia isn't the only country that loves fossil fuels. In 2023, Germany destroyed a whole village so a company could dig for coal, and countries like the US and China have their own big problems. But there are three things that make Australia especially strange. The first is that climate change has impacted the country a lot more than the rest of the world. Being the home to the Great Barrier Reef, Australia will be first destroyed by warmer seas this century if they don't cut down their carbon footprint. It has already been hit by terrible floods and wildfires. The second reason for this weird situation is that Australia should be an easy country to turn green. Australia is the 13th largest economy in the world with only 26 million people. It has some of the best engineers and handymen in the world, and it has a lot of clean energy sources like solar, wind, and water. The third strange thing is that Australia didn't put too much effort to protect the environment as other wealthy countries are doing. Why? Let's find out. The Australian government has said that by 2050 they will reach a zero carbon emissions, but this announcement was more like a forced declaration when allies like the UK and the US pushed them to do so in 2021. To better understand Australia's climate policy, you need to know that its economy was built on mining its resources and shipping them to East Asia and the US. First, the government took large areas of land from native Australians and claimed ownership of the minerals that were buried there. Then it rented the land to companies and charged them to extract the resources. Coal played a major role in that. Even 20 years ago, Australia relied heavily on coal to generate electricity. That percentage is still hovering around 50% even now. It's 25 times more than the amount burned in the United Kingdom and twice as much as the United States. The domestic fuel it consumes is a problem, but that's not the only issue. Australia is second only to Indonesia in global coal exports and you can see it in the country's politics. Mr. Speaker, this is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't be scared. Won't the treasurer you. knows the rule on crops. It's coal. It's coal. It was dug up by men and women who work and live in the electorates of those who sit opposite. That was former Prime Minister Scott Morrison in 2017. Of hope and confidence in the future of the coal industry. Coal is good for humanity. This is Tony Abbott, another former prime minister three years earlier. Conservative parties pushed coal-friendly policies and denied climate science for a decade. Australia had a chance to clean up after they were expelled in 2022. Now things have changed, but the new center-left government's ambitions fall short. We'll explain later in the video. However, the previous ruler's actions made Australia a climate villain. According to reports, a business lobby group referred to themselves as the Greenhouse Mafia as far back as the 1990s due to their significant political influence. The group had a stronghold on environment committees, where they exerted their power over Australian climate policy for many years. In one instance, when the government attempted to implement carbon pricing and mining company profit taxation, business leaders used their influence to pressure politicians while also utilizing creative marketing strategies to sway public opinion. If the price of coal goes up... The Grattan Institute conducted a study that revealed a significant overlap between ministerial officers and lobbying positions in the energy and resources sectors. Shockingly, more than one-third of all lobbyists were found to be former government officials. Adding to this concern is the fact that Australia has some of the weakest political finance laws among wealthy nations. During the last election, Unidentified donors contributed over $90 million to major political parties, representing a range of interests. However, Australians are left in the dark regarding which industries are buying influence. This lack of transparency is particularly concerning given the country's recent experience with extreme weather. Despite this, citizens haven't demanded action against the fossil fuel industry. But there's a reason for this. Climate Council, are you sure Australia's emissions really could make a difference? This doesn't mean we deny climate change or we deny that some action shouldn't be taken, but it does, this study does disprove the idea that we're living in a catastrophe already. A significant portion of Australian media is controlled by a single individual, Rupert Murdoch. 
The media mogul, who is 91 years old and is also behind Fox News in the United States, owns the three largest newspapers in the country. In addition, Murdoch's company, News Corp Australia, owns the TV channel Sky News Australia. Murdoch's media outlets have been known to aggressively promote their own agenda, including targeting conservative politicians who show moderation on climate change. There has been some noticeable change recently. In 2020, Rupert Murdoch's youngest son James spoke out against his father's media empire for its climate denial stance during the devastating Australian bushfires. James subsequently resigned from his position. One year later, the company surprised many by launching a campaign that promoted the advantages of reducing emissions. News Corp calls its climate campaign the biggest editorial project in a decade. However, despite moving away from overt climate denial, the company continues to push for the postponement of action on climate change. One argument that has worked particularly well is the idea that fighting climate change will cost Australian jobs. Australia boasts some of the largest mining companies globally, and this industry accounts for roughly 10% of the country's GDP. While it is crucial to find alternative employment opportunities for workers in the fossil fuel sector, the role that coal, oil and gas play in the country's economy is smaller than commonly believed. Australians significantly overestimate the size of the gas and oil industry's employment by a factor of 58. Similarly, when it comes to coal, the public perception is that coal mining comprises 13% of the GDP, when in fact, it is 10 times less significant. So it's sure to say that the media doesn't help in educating people. Australia has ample potential for renewable energy, with abundant sunlight and wind, as well as significant mineral deposits such as copper and lithium, which are essential for transitioning to clean economies. Despite the ongoing denial, Australians are generally supportive of taking action to address climate change, likely due to the impacts of frequent fires, floods and droughts. A recent study by the Australian Institute revealed that 75% of Australians are concerned about climate change, with 79% advocating for the phase-out of coal plants. While the new government has committed to reducing emissions by 43% by 2030 from 2005 levels, these targets are still insufficient to limit global warming to the desired 1.5 degrees Celsius target, though it would be an improvement from the current trajectory towards 2 degrees Celsius. But despite its higher ambition, the new government has two big problems. The first challenge is the sheer number of fossil fuel projects currently in the pipeline, with 117 planned projects. If these projects are approved and built, they will push Australia's emissions beyond any limits that the government has set. The second, and perhaps more significant, the problem is the government's reliance on carbon offsets as a strategy for reducing emissions. The government has proposed a limit on the amount of CO2 emissions allowed for each good produced, which will decrease by around 5% each year. However, instead of mandating that companies emit less CO2, the government is allowing some companies to purchase certificates claiming that they have offset their emissions by reducing pollution elsewhere, a lot of the time by planting trees or protecting forests. However, Australia is gradually transitioning to a cleaner energy system, with renewable energy becoming cheaper and displacing fossil fuels, even in areas with weak policies. While the federal government has been slow, some states like Queensland and Victoria are moving away from coal. Tasmania has already achieved 100% renewable electricity and aims to generate double its energy needs from clean sources by 2040. Despite Australia's reputation as a climate villain, its people are demanding change, and progress is being made despite the influence of lobbyists and journalists who have pushed the country towards fossil fuels. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check other videos in order to support this channel's growth.